the augmented triad there in measure 11 that you hear on the last bead as a, as a kind of a resulting chord makes sense because it's very similar to the French augmented six chord in that it's a series of, of uh, whole steps. So it has that kind of that whole tony sound to it. Mm -hmm. right? That's why they're very similar. Okay. And then we just kind of repeat that, don't we? We get to the uh, E sharp, F sharp. Woo! How about see if we can get worse? Yes, even worse. All right. Then we have this, oh my goodness. Right? We have. Some sort of resolution, and we have a we have a total deceptive cadence there, mm -hmm. the five to six, there in measure eighteen, six to seventeen. Okay, so now, now let's move on and let's keep listening. I'll back it up just a little bit. We will start at the very beginning.
So this is kind of unlike any piece that we've really looked at before by a factor of 10, right? Yes. <laughs> much, much different, much, much more complex harmonically. And so the question becomes, why in the heck are we talking about this in 20th century music when this is clearly a 19th century? Why are we, why are we studying this piece? It might lead up to some, some things that were used in the harmonization, I guess, would carry over into the 20th. In fact, no. <laughs> I try. Not really. Other than maybe the French six chords. This was scandalous when this was written. Mm -hmm. This is why we're looking at it. The whole theme of, of the 20th century is be bold, be new. Mm -hmm. right? With Vivaldi, that piece we looked at, the second mm -hmm. movement, completely bold, completely new, completely unlike anything that was around it. Right? Harmonically, extremely outside the box. When, when I talked about the Beethoven, the Beethoven first symphony starts with a five seven of four bold outside the box thinking even for turn of the century uh europe at that time very bold there were st strict guidelines the way people were supposed to compose and beethoven said the heck with that i'm doing what i want uh the list piece that we looked at on wednesday really forward thinking piece Think about what was going on in the 19th century in France, what was going on with, with art. We had the, what are the, the, what are the artists? The Monet. Impression, right, the Impressionists. Typically in art, the visual arts are ahead of the curve and the musicians follow suit. Hmm. So the list, list reaction is, at least the gray clouds is kind of a reaction to the impressionistic paintings that kind of began in the in the 1850s, 1860s, because this piece was written in 1885. This piece here, totally scandalous, because at the beginning we have no resolution and no even hint of where that where that's going to go. The, that opening gesture of French six to five, and then a completely new idea going French six to five, and then a completely new idea with an augmented chord going to five, and then the whole piece really doesn't have any sort of resolution. So my question first is, why is Wagner being so like this? What, why is he doing this? Well, I guess he's imitating the story. Right. Or he's trying to um, make the listener go through what the character is going through. Which is what? Which is delayed, well, it's delayed something, right? I was gonna say delayed gratification. No, not, no, no, not <laughs> that. Well, certainly delayed, I would say never, right? Mm. Thwarted. Thwarted, thwarted, thwarted gratification. right? Thwarted gratification. Uh, gratification denied. Right, but, but the thing, it's not even that, I would say, yes, hello, good morning. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're fine. I'm We're carrying these back downstairs. Oh. <laughs> Oh, those are fun. Is, uh, uh, is that just for our for for theory one or? Oh, that's a, a grand staff. Sweet. Okay, excellent. I did buy them for theory one, but when she's not using them, they're okay. Okay, great, awesome. Thank you. Might need to. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, you're fine. So, what else is? I mean, Isolde is is what's happening with her? What what was it is. I mean, think about what's going on in the character. What's going on at this point? Processing what's happened. Probably mm -hmm. a big wash of things. Right. Exactly. So it's so it's a swirl of emotions. Uh, it's not a it's not a stable mm -hmm. thing, right? So Fondner's not just being cute, right? He's doing his best to describe how Isolde is processing the profound grief that she's feeling from the death of her lover. And so the fact that there's like all these, 
this long sections of phrases where there seems to be no real resolution, it's, he's not doing that just to be cute. He's doing it to say, this is what's happening in real time. Yeah. It's like each one's a different thought or a different little tangent. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily relate to each other. They're... Right. Right. Exactly. There's no... Yeah, right. There's, there is a relationship to each other because it's kind of her... Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So her, that, that first thing is that da 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 dee, oh, dee. It's like every note is like piercing. It's like gut-wrenching. The dissonance involved with that is, is gut-wrenching. Mm -hmm. And so when you see, you hear these little moments, it's like you, you've, you, there's like yearning and churning of emotion and all of that. And upheaval, change. Change is occurring, and uh, Isolde is so not liking it that she's actually going to take her life at the end of this. So, <laughs> and also think about Wagner not just as an operettist, but you know, he was the person who kind of built what's called the music drama. So Wagner is kind of the precursor to uh, our modern movies and, and, and television, actually. Showing, you know, you know creating emotion and, and drama, not just, not just a, uh, you know, uh, not just a musical farce or anything like that, but more just and, you know, serious drama, serious tragedy. The, the subject matter was nothing new, right? It was just the treatment of the music. Mm -hmm. So right. how would it have been handled otherwise? It would have just been, I guess, a, a really piece of minor or something? Or How would they get those feelings across, or did they just not think about doing it? Well, because Wagner's the one who's, who kind of started this idea of what, what we call music drama which is emotion in real time. Okay. Uh, if we look at a piece like Die Valkyra, for instance, the first 40 minutes of Die Valkyra after the overture is a scene between a brother and a sister that don't know that they're brother and sister and they just kind of happen upon each other and they're talking. They're just having a conversation. And the music is kind of, you know, it's like every moment is, you feel the, the drama of what they're feeling, whether it's joy or frustration or anger or depression or whatever. You, you, Wagner is attempting to describe that. So he's, So it's not like, you know, with Mozart, you would have um, I think, like I think of uh, the magic flute, you mm -hmm. know, where you have or something like that. So you have it like a definite beginning and end, right? And it's kind of divorced from like true emotion of what we as human beings feel in real time. Oh, because it never really starts, does it? It's just sort of yeah, it's just, somewhere it's just else. Kind of a, it's, just a, it's just a scene, right? It's just, it's just you know, you have, you, have this, you have the scene, you have this person singing an aria, they sing the aria, and it's done, and then they go on to the next scene. It's actually much like, like light opera or musicals, mm -hmm. right? Musicals have that kind of same thing. It's not real emotion. It's more like you know, if there's an aria, it's like a brief moment, like three, four minutes where they talk about how this person is feeling about this other person or whatever, or this situation or whatever. But it's a, it's a short, defined time frame. Whereas with Wagner, he's not really interested in kind of a cookie cutter approach to arias. That's why when, like when we hear uh, student recitals and we hear people singing, Arias, you, 
never hear people singing Wagner. Because it, it takes would be like long? a 20 minute aria, <laughs> right? Because it just keeps going and going and going and going. Because he's imitating something that's more human, more... Well, it's just, he's trying to match real time emotion. And like ha like the like the immediate reaction, mm -hmm. not just a not just a, a here's a, a moment in time, but just like it's like it's the it's different. The unraveling of that, mm -hmm. the unfolding of that. Thing. Right. And so this is this here. This is kind of this like when you said that it, it doesn't really match. There's like a a, a, a thought here, a, a cry here, mm -hmm. a, a moment here. It's all different and that's kind of the that's what Wagner did to kind of change how we think about opera in particular you know because you think about the 19th century there was no TV there's no radio you know what, what did people do for entertainment they would go out and they would they'd go to the theater they maybe see a, you know uh, one act of a Shakespeare play then they'd go down the street and they'd see the opera and they'd see catch act two of some opera. And then they'd go there to maybe the symphony and hear like the last two movements of a symphony <laughs> that was being played, you know? They would just wow. go from place to place. They wouldn't go, like they wouldn't, hopping. you know, uh, <laughs> right, exactly. It would be like art hopping, right? Art hopping, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, and that, that, was, that was the, uh, the 19th century version of changing the channels. That's Cool. Uh, art get, surfing. You know? That's really neat. <laughs> I had to get up and walk. <laughs> and not just to get the remote. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's, it's neat. So so that I mean that's and so so Wagner was kind of giving giving us a different a, a different way of looking at the human drama. You know, which is completely different than even, like even Verdi Verdi's music is highly romantic but there's the way that Verdi wrote was more aria scene 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 whereas a scene with Wagner would be 40 45 minutes right so was it as digestible to listeners at the time or as you said it was well, Scandalous, was, right? Well, that that for this this piece in particular was scandalous because it, it didn't resolve. Mm -hmm. That's not what people were expecting, you know. Think about was the, that the modern day equivalent of like a bad movie? No, or a movie that people didn't get. No, it was just, it was just provocative. Okay, you know, it was it was it was like it just did it leave them feeling disturbed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, let me, mm. it's like in, you know, it's like in TV, you know, when you have uh, these moments where something is different, you know, like uh, the, the introduction of a gay character, mm -hmm. for instance, that was big, that was a big deal in the 90s, Yes. right? Um, uh, the, like the, the introduction of, uh, well, I, the movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner mm -hmm. in the 60s which is like the introduction of interracial couples, which, you know, <gasps> oh my goodness, you know, heaven forfend. Right? Think of the children. You know? <laughs> but, I mean, that was back in 1968, that was rather scandalous, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's, it's, these, it's these moments like, it's kind of those moments like that where you're, you're, you're challenging the, what the standard notion is of accepted practice uh, social norms right mm -hmm. and so in music there's there was certain practices that are that were accepted and one of them was you know you in an opera you would have arias and different people would sing arias and this way was completely new because it was it was showing mostly music as a like a thorough drama you know, so so like I always think of something like Star Wars as a great example 
of the 20th century version of a Wagner opera because it's the music is really thorough composed it's not here's a song here's a song here's a song like uh, it used to be like this is, I don't think I really they don't really do this anymore but in the 70s and maybe like I think it may, may have yeah I think it started in the late 60s and it ended in kind of the late 80s where you would have a song associated with a movie. So like um, Mrs. Robinson, mm -hmm. right? The Graduate. You know, those two, those two things kind of are synonymous, right. right? And then Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That movie had raindrops keep falling on my head. Clockwork Orange had... Uh... Uh, yeah, it also had singing in the rain. Oh, really? Yes, <laughs> in a very disturbing way. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Sorry, it's extremely disturbing. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's good. It's good examples. You know, and and uh, good juxtaposition. You know, I think like the James Bond movies. You mm -hmm. know, for your eyes only. Uh, um, yeah, every one of them. Yeah, almost. Goldfinger. Um, live Spy and let die. Me. Oh God, yeah. You know all of those. They're all. They all. They all have like particular. You know, and then you have Star Wars. Shoot, even Adele went, had one. You know, yeah. A couple years ago. Yeah. Right. But so most. But like most movies are like they. That's the way they did it. Mm -hmm. And then, but like Star Wars was not like that at all. It was just, you know, right. just a bunch of music. Real composed music. Right. right? Exactly. And that's another reason why I think Star Wars is standing the test of time. It's not that that the story is that magnificent. You know, it's just a it's a story of triumph over good, you know, triumph of good over evil. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a tried and true. That's can't go wrong with that, mm -hmm. you know. But it's and there's a good arc. Yeah, a character arc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but anyway. yeah, it has that music and right. made it more like a. Like a giant play or something, mm -hmm. a giant stage performance. Yeah. But Wagner is kind of the one who really started all of that. He's the one who really truly started the notion of, of something like that, where you would have just music that kind of just swirls around and try to describe the emotion or the scene of 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 something rather than rather than just okay, here's this person's particular thought, mm -hmm. you know. And another, like the other thing about the beginning of, of, of Wagner's Die Valkyra, you've got two characters and they're, you'd, they'd sing for a while, then there'd be, a, it's like a conversation. And so you'd have the music imitating this, the emotion of one character and then the music in, you know, imitating the mm -hmm. emotion of the other character. So it's so it's all, that that's all has has to do with that as well. So with this here, I want to get you started on this, and then I'm gonna I want you to see what you can come up with for um, uh, Monday. And so uh, <laughs> so the I'm gonna help you here. So. First of all, there is a brief, there is a brief, uh, so you're in A minor, and you have that sixth chord there in measure 17. And then almost immediately there, we are, we leave. Okay. And <clears throat> we move to C major. But then we leave C major almost immediately again, and we move to D minor. And then we move, and we're in D minor for like, mm, not very long, like maybe two measures. And then we move again to, to A major on the beginning of 20 uh, and in measure 24 mm. and then 
we have kind of a, a two five one ish thing that sounds almost like we're in E again, but we are no longer in E. It kind of moves away from E and then moves to D major at 32. <clears throat> And then back to C major in 36, which moves immediately to D, ma D minor, and then to F major. And then we have all these little augmented six chords here, starting at measure 36 and 37. These, uh, we have an augmented six chord there, and then we repeat that. And then we go up a step, and repeat that, and then we have another moment. So we have, it seems like the, it seems like the idea is uh, dee da dee dee da. Di da di di dum, di dum ba di dum. So that rhythm is prevalent a lot, a lot. So you have that. That actually starts happening in measure 18. Di da di da di di da di da di da di di da da di. Oh, lots of that, lots of that rhythm there throughout, All right? So at measure 18, what is that chord there? If we're in, think of that chord in the key of, of C major. That'd be the five, seven, five. five well, five, six, five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there, um, it's almost like, uh, how, how would you, if, if you think of measure 18 as being in C, then how do we get there? So if we're starting in A minor, for instance, mm -hmm. and that chord there in measure 17 is a 6, well, what is it in the key of C? Four. Yeah. So here, that, that actually is kind of being shown as a pivot chord there on B2, the big B2 there. In measure 17, that's a, that's a 6 becoming a 4 in C. So then, and then that's a 5, 6, 5, a 5. And then, what's that next chord there? Kevin, what is that chord there on B2? Big in B2. 18? Yeah. Uh, let's see. You remember in bass clef here? Uh -huh. G, E, A. No, that's bass clef. Oh, wait. G, E, and. All of its bass clef, huh? Yeah. Oh, C. C. So what is that in the key of C? E minor. It's three. And C? Wait. C, E, and G? Oh, sorry. One. I, I saw G, E, and C. Okay, so that's one. Yeah, one in what inversion? Um, second. Yeah, so one, six, four. And then, uh, Ernie, what's the next chord in measure 19? 19, we have A, C, D sharp. F sharp. F sharp. And E. Yeah, but not E. E is not harmonic. C. And D. So D, F sharp, A, and C. It's a. Um, in the key of C. In the key of C. Five of five. Yeah, which inversion? In third. Second. 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 So it's five, four, three of five. And that E is a non-harmonic tone. It's a, what kind of non-harmonic tone is that?
It's hard because it goes from clef to clef. So it's an E in the previous one. Right. right. So it would be what? Oh, is this a uh, retardation? No. Um, Something like that? Uh, yeah, suspension. 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 It, and this is, a, this is a trick question because there's no such thing as a 5-4 suspension. Really, really, it's probably just a 6-5 against the F-sharp. Or a 7-6, sorry, 7-6 against the F-sharp. That's probably the way I would look at it. Because <clears throat> there's really no such thing as a 5-4 suspension. Mm -hmm. Right? And so 5-4-3 of 5, the next chord is, hey! G major. Five! Five! And then we have that F, which is a passing 7. And then the next chord is, hey, we got a 1-6 there in measure 20. And then we leave. D minor. We leave. That, not D minor. No, G minor. Sorry. Uh, G minor and second inversion, right? So we're, we, are, we are fast leaving the key of C. And what is that chord there on, the, on beat uh, 2 with the C sharp? C sharp, E, and B flat. Is that just a diminished 7? Yeah. Seven diminished, uh, yeah. 7 of? 7 diminished 7 of D. Right, which would be, if we're in the key of D, Seven. Be seven seven. And so this is more of a direct modulation. So what the chord? What is the the previous chord? What is that previous chord, which is a a G second inversion chord in the key of D minor? What would you call that? Just a four six four. Yeah, four six four to a seven seven. And amazingly, that A is dissonant, <laughs> all right? And then, and then the next chord is, how are we doing on time, by the way? Uh, We're done. Done? Yeah, 10.55. 10.55, oh, okay, all right. So, so now, here's the deal. You want to be very, very mindful of what is dissonant and what is consonant. And so there are some places, like for instance, a measure 22 I'm looking at, that can, that can be very strange, but you want to look at, you want to look at, just make sure you've got the right notes. So like that first chord, for instance, is not it on B2. So you got to find the right one. And also look at how, like find find chords that are like like more more um, familiar. So for instance, twenty one, where we just stop. That's a one chord in D minor, yeah. right? You can kind of see that that's a D minor chord. Then then two and then one measure later, that's a five chord in D major or in D minor. And then the next chord. Mm -hmm. And measure 20, 1, 2, 3, that's a B major chord. All right? So you want to kind of find those island spots where you can find what the chord is exactly and then kind of just see how to get to those chords. Mm -hmm. How do we get there? Either by a secondary dominant or some sort of, like, a lot of times, like a diminished chord will do it. You know, a diminished chord to that chord. Because the thing is, when we listen to this piece, the thing that's genius about this is how well the music flows, even though it's so bizarre. Right? And so... Cool. There, so it's, the movements aren't very distant. Right. It's very... It's like it's, it's, like it's just being smeared out. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's the, kind of the genius of what he did here, is how he's able to make this smooth. And he does it by, by having relationships with, with chords that are not just random. It's 
It's it's a dominant tonic, or dominant, or, or, or tension resolution, tension resolution, yeah. tension resolution, those types of things. If you look at the music that way, it's very, very helpful to, you, to look at it that way. So, but I want you to see if you can get, I know this is quite a bit, but I want you to see if you can get all the way to measure 44. And measure 44, I will, I will uh, give you that chord. That is a major six. That last chord is a major six. Okay. Okay. All right, guys.